You might not know his name, you might not recognize his face, but whether you realize it or not, this man has shaped the very world you live in. Welcome back, everybody. Jensen is here, of course, the CEO of NVIDIA. This is the clear winner of every winner in the world of artificial intelligence thus far. His company powers everything from OpenAI, Google's uh, programs, Meta, we're all frenemies in some ways, we'll talk about it. Your phone, your car, your laptop, they all trace back to one company. And behind that company, a single mastermind has been pulling the strings. This is the story of Jensen Huang, the genius powering the tech world. Jensen Huang quietly built an empire that now controls the backbone of AI, gaming, and the future of computing itself. At first glance, he doesn't look like your typical billionaire tech mogul. No flashy rocket ships, no Twitter controversies, no desperate attempts to seek the spotlight. Instead, he operates in the shadows, calculating, methodical, and always 10 steps ahead. While others fight for attention, he fights for control. And make no mistake, Jensen Huang has more control over the future than almost any other billionaire in Silicon Valley. If you've ever played a video game, used AI software, or even scrolled through your social media feed, you've interacted with something powered by his company, NVIDIA. And yet, most people still don't understand just how deep his influence goes. NVIDIA started as a simple gaming graphics company. Today, it's one of the most important tech companies in the world. Quietly dominating industries you didn't even realize it touched. It's not just gaming anymore. It's self-driving cars. It's cryptocurrency. It's cloud computing. It's the AI revolution. It's in the servers running Google, Microsoft, and Amazon. It's in the research labs designing the future of medicine. It's in Tesla's self-driving systems. It's inside ChatGPT, powering the very AI that's reshaping the internet. And who controls NVIDIA? Jensen Huang. For years, he's been building a monopoly over the most valuable resource in the world today. Not oil, not gold, not even data. Computational power. Because in the AI age, the ones who control the hardware control the future. And Jensen Huang, he owns the machines that make AI possible. But how did a Taiwanese immigrant once bullied for not speaking English, rise to become the most powerful man in modern computing. And more importantly, how much control does he really have? The answer, more than you think. And it all started with a single bold idea. Before he became the architect of modern computing, before he built a company that would reshape the future, Jensen Huang was just a kid with no home, no money, and no clear path forward. He was born in Taiwan in 1963, but his family wasn't wealthy, powerful, or even particularly well-connected. They were just trying to survive. When he was a child, his parents made a desperate decision that would change their lives forever. Amid political turmoil in Taiwan, they made the heart-wrenching choice to send Jensen and his older brother thousands of miles away to the United States, completely alone. At just nine years old, Jensen began a journey that would take him nearly 9,000 miles from home, greeted only by an uncle in Tacoma, Washington. However, their hopes for a better life took a harsh turn. The boys were soon sent to Kentucky, not to a bustling city like New York or Los Angeles, but to a rural boarding school for troubled kids. This institution, the Oneida Baptist Institute, was far from the nurturing environment their parents had envisioned. Instead of guidance and support, Jensen and his brother found themselves surrounded by violence and despair. When Jensen first arrived at Oneida, he was shocked. Cigarette butts littered the ground. Students were smoking openly. It quickly became clear this wasn't some elite prep school. He was horrified to discover that his 17-year-old roommate had just returned from the hospital. I was expecting a roommate uh, about my age. Turns out my roommate was um, uh, 17 years old, uh, getting ready for bed. Uh, I noticed that he had all these uh, fresh wounds and uh, he had just come from the hospital. He was in a fight. He had seven stab wounds uh, and the other kid was killed. And so uh, uh, he was uh, uh, he was my roommate, and, and so that was that was kind of the beginning of my American experience, if you will. And um, uh, I, I loved it. I, I loved every moment of Oneida. This was the beginning of Jensen's American experience. Oneida wasn't prestigious. It was a dangerous reform school for troubled youth. Violence, knife fights, brawls, smoking, and drugs were his new normal. And Jensen didn't belong there. He wasn't troubled. He wasn't a delinquent. He wasn't even American. He barely spoke English. Yet here he was, a 10-year-old Taiwanese kid thrown into a world he didn't understand. It was brutal. He was bullied relentlessly, isolated, overlooked, but he never complained. Instead, he adapted. He cleaned bathrooms with pride. He worked hard. And slowly, his kindness began to influence the people around him, even his bullies. While others played outside, Jensen spent hours in the school's science lab, devouring every book he could find on physics, engineering, and computer science. By his teenage years, he wasn't just smart, he was dangerous. Because Jensen didn't just want to learn how things worked, he wanted to learn how to control them. 
His journey from Taiwan to the U.S. wasn't just a story of hardship, it was the foundation of a legacy that would reshape the world. By the early 1980s, Jensen had earned his way into Oregon State University to study electrical engineering. He later completed a master's degree at Stanford, joining a generation of brilliant minds destined to transform Silicon Valley. But Jensen was different. He didn't want to work for someone else. He didn't want to be the next Steve Jobs or Bill Gates. He wanted to build something entirely new. At 30, he left his stable, well-paying job. No investors, no guarantees, no safety net. All he had was an idea, one no one believed in at the time. He wanted to build a graphics company. It sounded ridiculous. Graphics were a niche, useful for video games, sure, but not world-changing. Everyone told him it wouldn't work, but Jensen saw something no one else did. While others saw graphics as entertainment, he saw the future of computing. And he was right. In 1993, with just $40,000 and two co-founders, Chris Malakowski and Curtis Prem, NVIDIA was born. The name NVIDIA has an interesting origin. Initially, the team had been using the name NV as a playful reference to their project files. As they brainstormed for a more fitting name, they discovered that the Latin word for envy was NVIDIA. This inspired them to create a new name that conveyed innovation and advancement. Thus, NVIDIA was born, a name that would soon become associated with cutting-edge technology in the graphics processing industry. Their logo, the all-seeing eye, wasn't just cool design, it was a warning. NVIDIA wasn't here to play games, it was here to change them. At first, they were just another startup in a world dominated by Intel, IBM, and Microsoft. But Jensen had what they didn't, vision. While others focused on CPUs, Jensen focused on graphics processing, and it was a massive gamble. Then came 1999, and everything changed. NVIDIA released the GeForce 256, the world's first graphics processing unit, GPU. People thought it was just for gaming, they were wrong. Because Jensen hadn't just created a chip, he'd created the future. While the rest of the industry was focused on making faster processors, he focused on parallel computing. See, CPUs were built for general tasks. They were powerful, but they processed information one step at a time. Jensen saw the flaw. Why process one task at a time when you could process thousands simultaneously? This was the foundation of the GPU revolution. At first, people thought it was just a cool piece of gaming hardware. They were wrong, because Jensen hadn't just built a better graphics card, he had built a machine that could revolutionize computing itself. The GeForce GPU wasn't just faster, it was different. It could handle millions of calculations at once, rendering lifelike visuals in real time. Video games became cinematic, 3D rendering became effortless, and for the first time ever computers were no longer limited by their CPUs. The industry took notice. Game developers flocked to NVIDIA, realizing their software could now be more powerful than ever. Within a few years, NVIDIA wasn't just competing with its rivals, it was crushing them. But Jensen, he still wasn't satisfied, because gaming was just the beginning. He knew his GPUs could do more, and in the mid-2000s, he made a move that would change everything. He bet NVIDIA's future on AI. Most people didn't see it coming. At the time, artificial intelligence was still a niche concept, used in research labs, but nowhere near mainstream. But Jensen saw the writing on the wall. GPUs weren't just good at rendering graphics, they were perfect for AI. The same technology that powered video games could also power deep learning, complex simulations, and machine intelligence. And Jensen pushed NVIDIA straight into the future. He convinced researchers, engineers, and universities to use NVIDIA's hardware to train AI models. He developed QDA, a programming platform that allowed AI developers to use GPUs for more than just graphics. And then, everything clicked. AI exploded. Deep learning became the most important breakthrough in tech. And guess who controlled the hardware that made it all possible? Jensen Huang. Suddenly, NVIDIA wasn't just a gaming company. It was the backbone of the AI revolution. And Jensen? He had just secured his place as the most powerful man in computing. By the 2010s, NVIDIA wasn't just a company anymore, it had become an empire. Jensen Huang had transformed a niche gaming hardware manufacturer into the beating heart of the AI revolution. Around this time, he learned that a group of Stanford PhD researchers were using NVIDIA's products for something he had never encountered before. It wasn't video games or sophisticated visuals. Instead, they were delving into a niche academic area, deep learning. These scientists were developing complex algorithms that mimic the human brain, a field known as artificial intelligence, or AI for short. They soon discovered that the most effective tool for training these AI models was GPUs. Unlike CPUs, which built algorithms piece by piece, NVIDIA's unique parallel processing capability allowed for the simultaneous processing of vast amounts of data. This was where NVIDIA's bold, closed software ecosystem began to shine. With its specialized programming language, CUDA, the enormous potential of NVIDIA's GPUs was finally unlocked, 
positioning the company at the forefront of a technological revolution. By 2016, NVIDIA was no longer just a tech company. It had transformed into a formidable empire. Jensen Huang had taken a niche gaming hardware manufacturer and turned it into the beating heart of the AI revolution. That year, he delivered NVIDIA's groundbreaking AI supercomputer to Elon Musk, who was then a board member of OpenAI. This pivotal moment would sow the seeds for a future that would soon flourish. Fast forward to 2022, when OpenAI released its first mainstream product, ChatGPT. This conversational chatbot could generate content ranging from essays to medical advice and advanced coding. It went viral, amassing over a million users within just five days and attracting a staggering $13 billion investment from Microsoft. Suddenly, AI became the hottest market for tech startups, with hundreds of new companies emerging daily, generating nearly $50 billion in venture capital funding worldwide. Jensen, who had been advancing NVIDIA's ultra-fast processing technology for decades, was poised to capitalize on this explosive trend. As AI took off, so did his reputation, elevating him to the status of a Silicon Valley celebrity. A week before the release of ChatGPT3, NVIDIA had partnered with Microsoft to build one of the most powerful AI computers in history, connecting tens of thousands of its GPUs in a single system. At this point, Jensen's commitment to high-quality software and NVIDIA's CUDA ecosystem propelled the company's market cap into the stratosphere. The NVIDIA H100 GPU, priced at over $30,000, sold out almost immediately. Facebook's Mark Zuckerberg announced plans to invest billions in acquiring 350,000 units, while Elon Musk sought 100,000 GPUs for his own AI projects. In a single quarter of 2023, half a million units were sold, with wait times extending well over a year. In 2020, Nvidia's stock had skyrocketed, reaching a valuation of over $300 billion, and by 2024, it surpassed an astonishing $3 trillion. This was no ordinary tech company, it had become one of the most powerful corporations on the planet. At the helm was Jensen Huang. No boardroom politics, no billionaire investors pulling the strings, just one man making the critical decisions. His influence extended beyond financial power. It was about control. NVIDIA had quietly infiltrated every industry that mattered. In gaming, it dominated the market. In supercomputing, it powered the most advanced systems. In self-driving cars, it served as the backbone of innovation. In medical research, its AI was leading groundbreaking discoveries. And in the military, NVIDIA held government contracts worth billions. Now, Jensen Huang had his hands on the future of artificial intelligence itself, steering NVIDIA into uncharted territories and shaping the technological landscape for years to come. Think about that. AI isn't just another tech trend. It's the single most powerful tool humanity has ever created. It will decide who gets jobs, who gets loans, who gets healthcare. It will shape wars, economies, and global politics. And who controls the hardware that makes all of it possible? Not Google, not Microsoft, not even OpenAI, Jensen Huang. Because every major AI company, every single one, relies on NVIDIA's GPUs. For years, Jensen Huang built NVIDIA's empire in plain sight. And for years, no one questioned it. Because who was really paying attention? While the world obsessed over Elon Musk's Twitter rants, Jeff Bezos' space race, and Mark Zuckerberg's metaverse, Jensen was silently taking over the infrastructure that powered them all. But now? Now people are starting to ask questions. How much power is too much? Because make no mistake, NVIDIA isn't just a company anymore. It's the backbone of the entire AI industry. And that kind of control, it comes with controversy. AI is the future, and NVIDIA owns it. Right now, their GPUs are so far ahead of the competition that companies like Google, Microsoft, and Amazon have no choice but to buy from them. Jensen set the prices. Jensen decided who got the chips first. Jensen dictated the future of AI hardware. And governments started noticing. Regulators in the US, Europe, and China began raising concerns. Was NVIDIA becoming a monopoly? Were they controlling AI access by limiting who could buy their chips? And the bigger question, what happens if NVIDIA decides to stop selling to certain companies, or even entire countries? Because right now, the world runs on NVIDIA, and that gives Jensen unprecedented leverage. But that wasn't the only problem. NVIDIA's AI chips are so powerful that the US government actually banned them from being sold to China. Why? Because AI isn't just about self-driving cars or chatbots, it's about military power. The same GPUs that power AI assistants like ChatGPT, they're the same GPUs that train autonomous weapons, surveillance systems, and cyber warfare tools. And the US realized something terrifying. If China got its hands on NVIDIA's most advanced chips, it could accelerate its AI capabilities by years. So in 2022, Washington stepped in. 
They blocked NVIDIA from selling its high-end AI chips to China, cutting off the country's most critical tech supply. The result? China panicked. They started scrambling to build their own AI chips. And NVIDIA? They found a loophole. Instead of selling their best AI chips to China, they developed a slightly weaker version, one that just barely complied with US regulations. And China? They bought billions of dollars worth. But now, the US government is catching on. And if NVIDIA gets caught in the middle of a US-China tech war, it could change everything. The AI future, and the dangers that come with it. Jensen Huang isn't just selling hardware anymore, he's selling the future. Every AI breakthrough in the last decade, powered by NVIDIA, and that's the problem. Jensen Huang is not just a CEO anymore. He controls the chips that run the most powerful AI models on Earth. He decides who gets access and who gets left behind. And for now, no one can stop him. But the question is, how long can he stay on top? Because if history has taught us anything, it's that no empire lasts forever. For years, NVIDIA's dominance was undisputed. No one could touch their AI chips. No one could match their technology. But now, the challengers are lining up. Google is building its own AI chips. Amazon is investing billions into alternative processors. Apple, Microsoft, and even Tesla are racing to break free from NVIDIA's grip. And the biggest threat? China. After the US banned NVIDIA from selling its most powerful AI chips to Chinese companies, China didn't just sit back and accept defeat. They started building their own. Companies like Huawei and Beren are pouring billions into AI chip development. They may not be able to match NVIDIA today, but in five years, 10, the race is on. Jensen Huang has avoided the spotlight for most of his career. But now, governments are watching him closely. Regulators in the US and Europe are already investigating whether NVIDIA is a monopoly. If the pressure increases, they could force NVIDIA to break up. They could block acquisitions. They could limit Jensen's control because no government, not even the US, wants a single company holding the keys to the future. And yet, even if they try to stop him, it might be too late. Jensen Huang was never the loudest billionaire in the room. While others were arguing about AI's future, he was building it. While others were predicting the AI revolution, he was making it happen. And now, as the world finally wakes up to his power, Jensen is already 10 steps ahead. He sees what's coming. The AI arms race, the battle for chip dominance, the fight for control over the most powerful technology in human history. And when that battle begins, who will truly be in charge? Because right now, the most powerful man in tech isn't Elon Musk. It isn't Mark Zuckerberg or Jeff Bezos. It's the man most people don't even know exists. If you thought Jensen Huang's rise was shocking, Wait until you see how LeBron James built a billion dollar empire that no one saw coming. From the courts to the boardrooms, his business moves will blow your mind. Click here to watch now.